Hi there, I'm Tim Clark reporting from E3 in Los Angeles and I'm joined by Nintendo Gamers Matthew Castle. Hello Tim. Uh, we've just been over to Koreatown's finest internet cafe to check out Satoru Iwata's uh, big reveal, or pre-press conference reveal. Uh, and the job, Matthew, seemed fundamentally to me to kind of explain what the hardware is, show the kind of core functionality in terms of what it does, because last year it was a complete farrago. Everyone seemed quite unsure as to what they were being shown. I mean, I, for half of it, I thought I was being shown an SD uh, controller, but we have a reasonable understanding of what Wii U is now, but I guess this was a job that still needed doing. Yeah, absolutely. It's basically, I think the idea was they wanted to, uh, before their, their Tuesday conference, was get the hardware out of the way so they could focus on the software. There was a lot of things today with, you know, this all makes sense on Tuesday kind of thing. So, yeah, and most, the majority of the, the actual speech was last year's sizzle reel of Wii U, uh, broken down with audio commentary, which is basically what everyone needed back then, which was saying, like, look, this is the dual screen playing golf. This is me using a touchscreen, uh, you know, which I guess is what people, people needed. There was a lovely moment that got, it was the opposite of last year, because last year was such a confusing cloud of weirdness, but this year they took the level of explaining down to going, we've invented this thing called Meverse, it's both me and universe, <laughs> and that's yeah. how it's become, like, th that was the level of nuts and bolts <laughs> they were going into, but, so what, what did you make, because there was news nuggets in there, and yeah. one of which was this, uh, the Pro Controller, or, yeah. or more commonly, as I imagine, it'll be known as the Xbox 360 controller. Yeah, I and mean, they've basically, I'm mean, with the tablet itself first, or as they're now calling it, the Wii U gamepad. Uh, they've moulded it to be a little bit more like a controller. On the back, it's a bit more obvious kind of grips. It had this shelf list last year, but now it's got grips. Uh, they've also added analog sticks, uh, which are clickable, yeah. which it didn't have before, uh, which is basically bringing it in line with a 360 pad. And then they showed the Wii U kind of new classic controller, which is a 360 pad. So, you know, the idea being that you can just play and, and the games that will work well on PlayStation 3 and, and 360 can translate very easily to, to Wii U. Yeah, I mean, you still didn't get much of a sense of, uh, you know, there's been much talk about kind of how powerful it will actually be. And because they weren't showing the software yet, hard, hard to tell, I guess. But just from the pad alone, you can... It, it's obvious the yeah. the methodology is to make it so that games can be easily yeah. ported. But in terms of other stuff that was interesting, what really stood out for you? Was it Miiverse? Uh, yeah, it was the Miiverse. I thought it was interesting that they finally said the Wii U tablet is a uh, universal TV remote, which which they hadn't said before. So it really will be the one remote to kind of rule them all, uh, which is kind of what we needed. Does that mean you'll have to throw it into a volcano after you've had it for three years? Yeah, maybe. That's when you can't get past that final boss and, you know, chuck it in. Uh, yeah, the, I guess the big thing was Miiverse, which is their new uh, sort of home hub system uh, slash online social element. Uh, which in typical well, Nintendo do online and social really well so that should be fine <laughs> yeah. right well no what they do is they, they, they always do this they take something which is quite a common idea and then they go well we can't do that because we've got to do our own thing we've got to take a slightly kind of curveball left field approach to it so they've taken the idea of just sort of instant messaging which makes sense uh, you know except they've then tied it to a very kind of what strikes me as a very game specific system in terms of messaging your friends about moments in the game and almost having like a her game Twitter feed. So, so did you read that? As it was, you were just. I mean, I guess we'll find out more as the show goes on. But so they ran that, what looked to be very expensive and fairly embarrassing video <laughs> with John the hipster douchebag on his sofa getting yeah. stuck in a kind of a. I don't know if that was actually a zombie game that we we're expecting, or if that was just like some Gennaro, oh, some Gennaro like zombie it. footage. Yeah. But he got stuck with the boss, and then he jumped onto his not Twitter, but sort of Twitter feed, and there were people going, well, I, this is how you beat yeah. that boss. And the idea of it being linked to not just, you know, the top level of the game, like you might follow the Mass, you might follow mass Effect on Twitter, but yeah. actually being linked to specific sections yeah. of the game made it feel like, and certainly with also how, it, how they had the stuff popping into games later at key yeah. points. Yeah. That seemed really interesting to me because people love Dark Souls and Dark Souls has yeah. a similar kind of ambient yeah, social that messaging. Sort of that was that sort of revolutionary thing. Everyone says with Dark Souls that it's the kind of game which brought Twitter into it in terms of it made it a community experience. You know, the idea being that even in a single player game, you're playing together, which was Iwata's message throughout that. Um, yeah, I guess that's going to be their, their big focus. I mean, the things with like Super Mario having kind of congratulatory messages uh, popping up at the end of levels going, well, nice one, I did this level as well, you know, or that kind of stuff. Yeah, I, I think that's cool. I'm, I'm a little intrigued to what their actual broader s sort of online offering is in terms of communication between players. But the idea of this sort of always online, kind of experimental, people chipping into your play experience, I and mean, that sounds great. I mean, we'll have to see who's using it and how they're using it. Um, I, I know last year Ghost Recon guys, for example, uh, Ghost Recon Online, talked about a very similar thing for their game. So I guess that's what 
they were talking about there. They called it the ghost feed back then. But yeah, the idea of that functionality built into every single Wii U game, you know, whether you know whether or not people want it or want to use it, I think that's cool. Like, I'm, I'm uh, per- personally, I mean, I thought I thought the whole thing actually was what ideas there were were really interesting. Mm-hmm. I thought it's, it's kicked the whole of E3 week off to a, to a really good yeah. start. Like E3 is always best when there's new hardware and the social stuff. You know, from back in the days of being able to see other people's ghost replays, it's that lovely sense of like someone else has been here before me and yeah, being able yeah. to kind of check out what they're doing. But I guess other than that, the main reveal was obviously the porn curtain. <laughs> the porn curtain, which is the uh, the web browser, which like the 3DS, you'll be able to pause Wii U games and go into a web browser, and that's also where this Me Verse stuff takes place. Uh, but part of the fun is that inst- you can either browse it on the tablet and also have it on the screen at the same time, or you can browse it on the tablet and draw a curtain across it on screen and then surprise family members with images <laughs> so um so, prepare for horror grandma yeah we'll keep that goatsy <laughs> picture saved on your on your tablet and you won't go far wrong all right so i mean well, before we wrap up overall were you pleased with it matthew was it kind of what you expected you were very excited beforehand yeah absolutely I and mean, if they can pack that much before the show i can't wait to see what they do with an hour and a half on tuesday i think it's going to be great me too and we'll be back after that to see uh, see how excited matthew is then cheers all <laughs>